Welcome to Dance to Heal Transformation Through Movement with your host, Jenny C. Cohen. Join Jenny as she shares stories of how dance and movement can bring healing in a way that is safe and tailored to your life. She's a cancer survivor, mother of two, and an award-winning performer who found that movement was vital to her recovery. Creator of Dance to Heal Wellness, Jenny will bring new techniques to help you on your dance journey and healing path. Are you ready to move? Dance to Heal, transformation through movement starts now. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to welcome you to Transformation Through Movement, Dance to Heal with Jenny C. Cohen. This is my first time with my own podcast, and I'm so excited with my first guest today. She's going to be coming on in just a few minutes. So let me give you some background. I am a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed in 2014, and I finished treatment at the end of 2015-ish, um, and I was released from all of my medications this year. So I'm about six years now post beginning and ending of treatment. And I wanted to share with you how much dance helped me. Here's the thing, dance doesn't necessarily mean this Western con concept of ballet or jazz. You have to, I wanna invite you to think of it as a global movement. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with our Western or limited views of what music is. Later on today, we're going to play a video with my son, Daniel, who is a University of Utah ballet major, who's going to dance with you and move with you for a more structured type of movement. I want to invite you to open your mind to the thought that dance can be anything. It can be movement to rain. I have a lot of kittens, so it could be to their purring, the sound of that. And... Um, even wind or your own breath. So my dance experience, it started with ballet when I was very young and I learned modern, I moved on to hip hop and contemporary and even belly dance and ODC, which originates from the beautiful country of India. And one thing that I learned in all of that is, has I learned to move more? The movement was releasing a lot of memories of trauma in my body. Now, here's the thing. During my cancer treatment, I did a lot of, of retreats where I would go to belly dance events. Even though I couldn't physically move, just being in the same space with other dancers made all the difference in the world. It was the feeling of the energy in the space I invite you to be open to experiencing and, and maybe exposing yourself to. Of course, with COVID now, those precautions have to be taken. Um, but there are a lot of open spaces where there's movements and parks where you can still energetically be with other people. And I want you to be open to that. Uh, one more thing is if you watch this podcast, and you go on any of your social medias and do hashtag dance to heal with Jenny on TikTok, IG, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And then you also find me because I'm under Jenny C. Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. I will gift you a free on-demand online class with me. So please make sure you do that. Now, to get back to how much I have found that dance or movement has been healing for me. Prior to my breast cancer treatment, I was studying a lot of belly dance and I found that this form of movement, which comes from cultures where they celebrate life in spite of challenges that I don't know if those of us in the States can really conceptualize and understand on many levels, unless you're an immigrant, I immigrated to the States when I was Thai, um, when I was six from Taipei, Taiwan, well, more rural parts of Taiwan. And I just found healing 
and centering at a level that I'd never found in any of the other dance forms that I was studying. During my treatment, when I went, there was a, a, a shift in the way that my body was releasing energies. And I wanted to make sure that we, we really explore that in the future podcast to come. I want to introduce this idea to you now. And I know you're going to return because we do really, really fun things in this podcast. Because I found that with my growth as a person, I'm 53, I know, 53, I'm 53. And life keeps giving me knowledge and lessons in a spiral pattern. And a lot of life lessons keep coming back because I'm in a different place, I'm a different growth, and I hear it slightly different. So I wanted to invite you to come back and I will keep introducing all kinds of ideas and methods to move to heal. One other thing I wanted to talk about is, and introduce to you, is the idea that you see me presented and I'm 53 looking. <laughs> you see my outward appearance. And unless I were to mention to you my history of challenges, you're not aware that I have a history of trauma or, or you know, other difficult things in my life, which you'll learn more about, I promise, not in a down way, but just to share how I brought a lot of my past experiences along with me. And part of my healing has been to recognize that a lot of times if I'm reacting in a way that I don't choose to, it is usually related to a, a past part of me being triggered in some way. And so it's hard for me to remind myself, I am here in 2021 and not back there because my body's memory has been triggered. One of the things that really helps me to center in the present is movement. Usually I'll put on a pop song later on in the podcast, we're gonna, we're gonna dance to my special friend Kapua, one of his new releases. And that tailored to your music preference or your movement sound preference helps me stay present. Another thing that I will do in congruence with that is I will tune in to my five senses. So I invite you to get comfortable for a second. And I want you to think about the last thing you tasted. So I'm gonna take a sip of my Earl Grey tea right here. Mm. So now I have the taste of Earl Grey tea in my mouth. Now I'm gonna concentrate on that. And I'm gonna taste the Earl Grey on my tongue. Now I'm gonna concentrate on the smell of that Earl Grey tea in my nostrils. I'm focusing on my taste and my smell. Now I'm going to concentrate also on what I'm hearing. I hear my air filter. I hear my voice. I hear my traffic outside my window. Oh, go back to my taste buds and my smell and what I'm hearing. Then I'm going to feel the clothing, my, my uh, butt cheeks on my sofa, <laughs> my clothing my hair pull back, go back to the taste, smell, hearing of my voice, clothing, and last, allow your vision to come into forefront. Try and focus on all five of those senses. Let's review them. Your taste, your smell, your hearing, what you're feeling through your body and what you're seeing. Mm, it's crazy, right? It really roots you right now in the present. Those are one of the techniques that I do right before I take the stage to perform, right before I walk into a scary new class or a new setting of people, because I remind myself that right now I am safe and I'm going to be okay. Does that help? Helps me a lot. And I invite you to just tune into those five senses right now for a few more seconds, because we're about to play a video, a three minute video, a movement video. You can stay seated or standing with my son, Daniel. Okay, now don't freak out. It's really fun and it's very low key. I invite you to do that. And, and if you're not comfortable moving, you just wanna watch the first time, no worries, do that. And you can come back to the replay 
and then play it and then move with us. All right, so um, again, tune into your smell, taste, what you're hearing, my voice, the feeling of your clothing or your legs on the back of the chair or your feet touching the ground. What you see, my face, hello. Focus on all five senses. Keep breathing in the nose, out the mouth, in the nose, out the mouth, in the nose, out the mouth. There you go. All right, so within a few minutes, we're gonna play that video for you. Keep breathing in the nose, out the mouth. I'm right there with you in the nose, out the mouth. All right, here we go. We're gonna play that video for you. Please get comfortable, either standing or sitting. We're going to do a series of quick inhalations and exhalations through your nostrils. The action will be primarily coming from your abdominals. You're gonna inhale in three, two, one, and exhale, 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 exhale. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Breathe normally, roll out your shoulders. Let's go again. Inhale, three, two, one and exhale, 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 ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and breathe normally. I invite you to tune into the music and begin to start lengthening the back of your neck, pushing up through an imaginary book on top of your head. Roll out your shoulders front up back and down, sliding your shoulder blades down along your back. You can keep your eyes open or close them, listen to the flow of music, and allow your body to move in whatever way it wants to. You can follow the melody or the percussion or a combination of the two. Continue breathing naturally. Now layer another body part to it. Trust in your body to move in a safe way. Bring your movement smaller, closer to your body. Quiet down your movements. Tune into your breath. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale through your nose, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Open your eyes if you've had them closed. I hope you have enjoyed our few moments of movement to heal. Oh, welcome back. I'm so excited to introduce to you my dear friend, Catrice Wallace Hoppesberg. She resides in upstate New York. And now I want Catrice to just share with us your story of once you were diagnosed with the SLE lupus and the fibromyalgia and a host of other autoimmune diseases, how, how, what happened after that? A lot of things happened. Um, my SLE got really serious and I ended up on chemo for about seven or eight months. And it took me out of my body. It took me out of who I was and who I had been. And it placed me in this foreign vessel that I was trying to figure out. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else has done this, but when you 
you lose your memory, you lose your taste, sometimes your sight and how things feel. And I couldn't recognize things that I had always loved. I couldn't recognize the feel of it, things that had brought me comfort. Um, but I had to, luckily I met you. <laughs> And you walked me through the process. You were patient with me and you called me on my fusion days and afterwards and you, you helped me take care of myself. Um, it, it was really difficult. I have to admit that was probably the hardest time in my life. And I've been through a divorce and <laughs> that was the hardest time of my life is healing myself. But um, you watching your journey taught me to change my attitude and see how I can go through what I'm going through, but always just kind of stay positive. And, and in staying positive, I was able to see the other side of what this could look like for me. And I chose that versus the other. And I was able to heal myself. I, I remembered we went to events together. Remember that exercise that, that uh, Dr. Dr. Val, also known as Nefertiti in the dance world, she had us doing that 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 eye gaze. We looked into each other's eyes. How long was it? Um, it I think it was about five minutes, um, but it felt like an eternity in a good way. And it felt like for the first time I could open up to someone because they knew what I was about to walk into. And in turn, you were able to offer me strength and vision into foresight and what was going to happen. And it it led me to see, this is gonna be hard, but this is doable. Don't listen to anybody else. You can do this. I right. still remember that. <laughs> yeah, and, and also you you danced through it, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, dan I toughed it out, which was probably not the best thing for me, but I'm hard-headed and I'm a Virgo. So I'm yeah. gonna do what I'm gonna do. And <laughs> I toughed it out and in toughing it out, I knew what I was made of, but I didn't know what I was made of in a state where I was actually taking care of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What other therapies did you use on top of movement to heal yourself? So on top of movement, I also used, um, I'm part indigenous, I'm part Asian. Um, so <laughs> I used my heritage to help help me. I, while I had the Western route, I also had the Eastern route and I had my home route. So that was a lot of herbs alongside of what I was taking. I went to um, a Chinese herbalist here and I took him every medication that I was on and he prescribed an herb to help me counteract that so I could be healthy. I also learned, like you said, to sit still be present in the moment because I realized it was in those moments where I was not present with myself that I was getting really, really sick. It was almost like I was absent from my body and incorporating movement. And not that I could move a lot because at one point I was using a walker. Mm -hmm. um, I was still moving, even if it was. Yes. I was still moving. Um, taking herbs, being present in my moment, getting therapy, getting, taking care of my mental health. That's what healed me. I'm going to be completely honest. That's what healed me is getting in touch with myself and being present and owning my body. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Thank you for sharing that because a lot of times we, we has, I'm just going to call what you had cancer too. We as cancer survivors, right? We, we are afraid, at least back when we were sick, it's, it's much more accepted now because more and more people are open about it on social media. But when I was going through back in 2014, it was, no one really wanted to hear the dirty details. They just, you know, I, I didn't even ever show anyone my bald head. It was always wigs so that nobody would look at me like I was passing away. <laughs> I literally had someone at an event give me permission to die. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm going to heal. They told me I have a good prognosis. What do you know that I don't know? <laughs> yeah. I, I had someone tell me that too. And I sat there and I was just like, I 
should really kick you in the shin. But <laughs> I have the energy, I can't reach your leg. Yeah, I'm like I have to conserve my energy for other things. But I'm coming back to you. I'm going to circle around to this. <laughs> yes, yes, and 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 I really do want to be honest, and that um, the audience who's tuning in and will be watching the recording when we say movement, we're 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 being very honest that I was talking about like a shoulder roll, like you saw my son demonstrating, you know, seated. I purposely had that video being seated to show you it is okay to get a therapeutic benefit from where you are at. I participated in these hundred days of improvisation during my chemotherapy. Literally every day's filming, because I had to do a hundred days in a row of filming, was me sitting there and doing like this to the music. <laughs> That's it. That's all I could do because I had no energy. And I remember when we saw each other at that, at, that, at that event, Catrice, when we were just staring each other in our eyes, I was barely recovered from all of my treatment. You were just starting and you were, your endurance was very low. And I remember the two of us doing what little we could and then just being in the space with all of that energy from that event. Yeah. Yeah, I remember just being like, I'm tapped out. I'm gonna go sit down and go take <laughs> But I, but that's part of this. Um, a lot of people like to shame you. If you can't, they, they will post, what is this post? If I can do it, you can do it. No, if you can do it, you can do it. And I'm going to do what I can do. And that's good enough. Stop with the, the health shaming. Stop with all the, just stop. Do what you can do. And that's enough. That you really is. Enough. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching this, you are enough. Catrice and I say that. We send that love and energy and acceptance out to you. You are enough. Enough. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Don't ever doubt it. Catrice, where can they reach you? They wanted some insight because you've helped me so much. Those few times you did readings for me. She was like, Jenny, Jenny, <laughs> people are waiting for you. Like, stop keeping them waiting. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll do my podcast. Um, you can reach me uh, right now. I'm in the process of building my website for people to come through and get help. But right now you can reach me at my first and last name, Catrice Hoppersberger at gmail.com. Or you can go to my dance website and you can still contact me through that. And I could separate the emails, whatever is easiest. My dance website is www.catriceferuza.com. And I want to really say this. When you're going through this healing, like Jenny said, be present. That's the only thing you have to do. Be present and be honest. That's it. That's yeah. all there is to it. Yeah. And, and uh, one other rule, what, if you are in recovery for and you're going through care or treatment, surround yourself with people that will allow you to dump out dump out like they should support you you get to say to them i'm having a bad day they don't get to look at you and be like i'm so sad you're not well no 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 no. they can go to their friends so then this way if you keep dumping out and they'll support you your focus is to present is your present self and healing you know and, um let's say my, my, our inner circles was us and then our husbands and our families and then you know relatives and friends and so forth and so forth you can't see my hands are going out <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah that's super important super important um yeah. oh and then i want to share with everybody because you just made a mother of the bride that was exquisite this gown so catrice and i we are hashtag multi-passionate <laughs> i gotta make sure she tells you about what else that she does yes um i am a designer i design clothes right now i'm actually designing um healing wear for people which will be softer fabrics more comforting fabrics like cashmere i found a really reputable source um, in mongolia and we're working to create cashmere wear for people you know when you're on chemo you're called all the time <laughs> and everything is itchy and I want people to really be able to relax, whether it's in a blanket or my socks or a hat or whatever, but please come check out, check me out at catriceferuza.com and come see what I can do. If you have any questions, please, I'm going to say this right now, and I'm saying this with all the honesty I have in me. 
do not hesitate to reach out. There are people out here that you don't know that are willing to support you where you may not have some friends that will support you. Some of the best support I got was from Jenny. She's not in my immediate family, but she was one of the best support people that I ever had in my, in my journey. So don't be afraid to reach out. It leads to absolutely beautiful things. So I want to make sure you know how to spell this. C-A-T-R-I-C-E. F-A-I-R-U-Z dot com. Because that's her dance name too. And yes. listen, don't get lost on her website because she's got some beautiful pictures. I'm going cross <laughs> I just love her pictures. My website's nice and boring, but you can visit there too at Jenny C. Cohen, C-O-H-E-N dot com. <laughs> Sorry, we have a little bit too much fun, y'all. So I think you're having fun with us, right? Yes. Yes. Make sure you, you hashtag Dance to Heal with Jenny to get your free online class with me. And also, uh, Catrice is teaching in California. If you're located in that area in October, Catrice, make sure you post that information on your website. I, I will. It's Everything is getting updated today, so I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. They have very, very limited, limited numbers of people they'll accept, all right, for registration. So grab your spot before they sell it. I'm going to be there. I've already made my plans. <laughs> so hopefully you join us it's in redding california yes please do it's going to be a great healing and good good movement yes much it is and you have access to other amazing healers with catrice and you will be super safe as you're doing that type of movement all right so we're going i have to wrap it up y'all i'm so sorry i run out of time uh, my producer jacob is giving me the 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 you have to wrap it up, Jenny. So we're going to play Kapua's Tune Tune song and dance it out with you. Here we go, Jacob. Roll it. Girl, Let's it's go. not too late. Come on the dance floor. Girl, it's not too late. Come on the dance floor. Keep your eyes on me while you make your way, yeah. Keep your eyes on me while you make your way, yeah. Now rock your board like this, rock your board like this, let it go, would you drop it low, now rock your board. Thanks for listening to Dance to Heal, Transformation Through Movement with me, Jenny C. Komen. Come back next time to hear more stories of recovery through movement and learn more ways that you can move your body to find healing on TransformationTalkRadio.com. To work with me and continue your journey, visit JennyCCohen.com. Are you ready to move?